Hi, I'm Craig Murphy, and I'm speaking at IMTC 2008. My session is test-driven development and code coverage using Visual Studio 2008 Professional. Why am I doing this? Well, test-driven development, or TDD, is now part of the Visual Studio 2008 Professional Edition. Prior to this edition, it was part of the Team System Edition, which might have been out of your reach financially. However, whilst test-driven development is very good, it's not a panacea. So in order to ensure that there is as little code in our application that is untested, we need to examine code coverage as well. So what's my session going to entail? Well, after an investment of time, which I will demonstrate using a, a fairly off-the-shelf example, TDD can mean writing less code, or at least throwing less code away. And code coverage provides us with an additional feel-good factor that our tests are as complete as they possibly can be. How am I going to do this? Well, in my session I will explain the basics of TDD and code coverage. I'll provide references to books and resources that have helped me during my uh, learning curve. And importantly, I will provide an end-to-end -end demonstration using Visual Studio 2008 Professional, covering for at least two-thirds of the demo, test-driven development, and the latter third, code coverage. Let's take a look on the laptop and get going with a quick demonstration. Okay, so that's the laptop fired up. What we're going to do now is take a quick look at test-driven development and code coverage. Uh, very small demos, just to give you a teaser or a taster of what I'm going to do in my session at IMTC 2008. Let's jump into Visual Studio 2008. And the first example we're going to take a look at is how we implement test-driven development. And you can see that in Visual Studio 2008 we have a new test project type and if we click on OK and create one of those we'll go through the motions of, of looking at how that would work. If you're familiar with other testing frameworks you'll probably know that test-driven development typically relies on uh, the ability uh, of a, a framework to use attributes and Inside Visual Studio 2008, that's no different. We have a test class attribute, which indicates that this class is going to, going to contain tests. We have a constructor that is fairly similar to the setup attribute that you may find in other test-driven development frameworks, such as nUnit. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we'll find that we have a test method. Now, it's this method that's going to actually allow us to perform tests on our classes. So for the benefit of this example, I'm going to create a very simple example. The bulk of test-driven development relies on testing whether things are true and false, etc. It can get a little more complicated, but in this example, I'm going to simply test whether two things are equal. I'm going to test for uh, an object coming back as the letter I. We're going to have a Roman numeral conversion routine, which converts integers into Roman numerals. So you can probably see where that method is going. It's going to take the number 1 and try and convert it to the letter I. If that doesn't work, what's going to happen is we're expecting to see the number 1 fails come back in a, an error message of some sort. If we press F5 and see what happens, of course the build fails. It fails because Roman conversion does not exist. So the simplest thing that we could possibly do to alleviate that is to actually assume we had an instance of the class. Now, of course, we're not getting any code completion here, so that's a, a telltale sign. But these are small steps, and they're designed to get you from one place to the next place. The size of the step varies, and we will take larger steps in my demonstration. Okay, let's press F5. The position of the error moves. It moves from here to here. The simplest thing we can possibly do to get rid of that error is to actually create a class. And we take a look at the method signature. The method is called RC, is called to Roman, and it takes an integer. So we'll take a look at creating that. It returns a string as well. So to Roman takes an integer and returns a string. Now the simplest thing we could possibly do in this instance is return an empty string. And if we were to press F5 now, the build will complete, the test will run. And the key thing is with TDD is to make the test fail in the first instance because you don't want the feel-good factor that everything's working first time. 
So if we take a look down here, we can see that the assertion has failed. We were expecting let letter I. We got back nothing. And there's our message, one fails. The simplest thing we could possibly do to make this work is simply replace the return type with the letter I. If we rerun the tests, in progress, there they go, they pass. So we've seen the test fail, we've seen the test pass. It's a very small step. I will take us up to well beyond 1,000 in this particular demonstration. And I'll go from this approach to a very concise table-driven approach. Uh, OK, let's take a look at code coverage. For code coverage, I have a very simple example. I've got a calculator class, and it has four methods, as you might expect. Not rocket science, uh, but it's enough to demonstrate code coverage. If we take a look at the tests that I have for this particular class, what I'm going to try and demonstrate is the fact that we're not testing enough. We're missing a few tests. So in my, my test class, I have an instance of the calculator, which I set up in the constructor. I have two test methods, testing add and testing subtract. And I, it's probably not rocket science again, but you can see that the add method is going to add 38 and 4 and return 42. And likewise, it's going to take 50 and subtract 8 from that and return 42 again. If we run these tests, pressing F5, we'll see them pass. Now, we've got two green ticks. We think everything's hunky-dory. We might think shipping that calculator class is the next best thing to do. In reality, we're looking for ways of finding out what tests we might have missed. So to help us with that, we need to look at code coverage. So what I'm going to do, without spoiling the session, I'm going to run the coverage tool that I have installed. I will talk about that more in the session. What it will do is it will run the tests we have, but it will also look at the My Calculator class and tell us which methods have not been tested. So it knows we have tests for add. It knows we have tests for subtract. It's telling us we haven't got tests for divide or multiply. And the beauty of this tool is it actually shows us the source code. So we can get a, a visual indication of what uh, tests we have to, to actually go away and create. That's all I want to cover in this teaser. This is going to be my first trip to Dublin, so I'm really looking forward to IMTC 2008. Looking forward to a good session, and I'm looking forward to a good social atmosphere in the bar afterwards. See you there.